Peace profound, much blessings and greetings to everyone. I'll be talking briefly about the report entitled Jan, Father of the Jinn. We do have a vast body of Arabic corpus on occultism that deals with the jinn. The number of manuscripts are in the hundreds. The number of conjurations and evocations are in the thousands. It's a lifelong study, and it definitely takes more than one lifetime to put it all into practice. This is just the reality of a tradition that has spanned thousands of years. Nevertheless, when I did take a look at the Arabic corpus of magical knowledge and I invested years of study, I saw a pattern. The pattern is this. The primary focus of the bulk of this information was on the underworld jinn. In particular, the focus was on the seven underworld jinn kings and their affiliates and tribes. Now, for someone whose nature is already aligned well with these kinds of forces, that's a good thing. There is a substantial body of knowledge for that person to pull on from. For the rest of us who want to work with the upper jinn or the benevolent jinn, the spiritually oriented type, we're left hanging. I kept running into this wall myself because the literature mostly does not go there. That information is vastly underrepresented. I have tried to compensate for this in my own reports, and my own personal work. There's another area in which this literature seems to be bizarrely silent. And this is the identity of who is the first of the jinn. Who was the jinn Adam? In the Judeo-Christian Islamic religion, we have our own stories of origin, and we have the stories of Adam. But what about the jinn? Who was the first of their kind? I'll tell you bluntly that after years of study, I have come to the conclusion Literally, nobody knows. However, there's enough information for us to make a calculated guess. Or, to put it differently, there's enough information for us to have a starting point from which to explore and discover and make connections with the father of the jinn. So, we have to have a starting point, however. So, I began to compile, after having made the decision, my own method, and I chose the possibility that made the best sense for me personally. I say for me personally because if I don't put stock in my own teachings, if they are not something that I intend to use personally and get results from on a personal level, then I have no business sharing it with anyone else. So I did find a starting point and I compiled the data and information which I presented later in the report, Jan, the father of the jinn. And from personal experience, and the experience of a number of people with whom I have shared this report before I made it public, I was pretty happy with the results that everybody was getting, myself included. And I gotta say, it went beyond what I was initially expecting from this. Let's say that it was I who just bought this report. And I have a very basic grasp of Arabic, but not enough. And I came across this question, how do I really know that Jan is the father of the jinn? Is there any supporting argument to back this up? Is this something historical? Or did this author just make it up? Let me first say before we proceed with this, that the word Jan has at times been used as a plural of the word genie. So, if somebody tells you that Jan cannot be a name because it's plural for the word genie, he's telling you half a truth. Now, this isn't news. Every Arab knows this. So, I knew this already. Everybody knew this already. But just because the word means something does not negate it having a different function, like being used as a name. Think of the word rose and how we use it to identify a species of flowers. Yet, there are many women walking around with the name rose. 
This is truism and common sense, and this alone will have demolished the argument. But let's go further. What we want to know is this. Is there any evidence that the word jam was used as a name? And if this evidence exists, does it lead us to believe that this Jan is the father of the jinn? Okay, so this is the question. Before we do this, though, I am going to write the three words. The singular, jinni, the plural, jinn, and the word jan, which also doubles at times as plural. I have in front of me here the Arabic keyboard that I use from time to time when I'm browsing on Google. So let me just type it in here for you. This is jinni, which is the singular. This is jinn, which is the plural. And this is jan, for the father of the jinn. And sometimes it doubles as the plural. However, it's very uncommon in regular vernacular to use the word jan as the plural. The common word is this, jinn. Just like this is the singular for male. And if we add the H here, it's singular for female. Alright. So, what would be the Arabic for father of the jinn? It would be this. Father of the jinn. Abu Jinn, father of the jinn. We will take these words and we will put them into Google. Alright, why Google? Well, if something is known enough, wide enough, then there will be references for it in Google. That doesn't mean the information is 100% accurate, but it does mean that it is known. If this information is obscure, then you're going to have to go digging up in some dusty tome in the university library or in some private manuscript collection. But if it's common knowledge, then it'll be easy to find in Google. As I said, accurate or not is not the issue. The issue is whether or not it's common knowledge. So, this is the first point we want to try to establish. What are the common knowledge information on the identity of the father of the jinn? So, we will just take this right here. Let me copy. Go on to Google, paste, and look at the results. All right. We have a bunch of stuff popping up here in Arabic. Islamic web, a post on Facebook, uh, Ahl al-Hadith, the people of the people of the Hadith. There's a few stuff here popping up, images. There's even a video clip entitled The Father of the Jinn. Alright, so th there seems to be a common name that pops up here. And the common name here is Sumia. Sumia. Alright, Sumia. So there's this, this is a common name that's being passed around. Let's just click on the first link here. And we see in, here in, in the post is February 16, 2014. This is in, by a guy named Abidu 20, 2010. All right. I know that you don't read Arabic. That's okay. We will run the posts or the comments in various translator software on Google so you can see live basically what I'm doing. And I will translate for you as well as we go. Now he says here, the first Abu Jinn who was Sumia, Adam. He says the father of the jinn is Sumia, and God created him before our master Adam. So let's take the word Sumia and let's see what we can figure out with this name. If you noticed, the word Sumia sounds a bit like Samael, right? But let's leave this aside and let's see if we can figure out more information about the name Sumia. Here we go put the word Sumia. We got a reference here to Wikipedia, an Arabic Wikipedia article. We have a phrase here, so let's just take this here, copy and copy this here, and let's see if you can find 
and translator. All right, we have a basic Google Translator popping up. Let's just paste this information. It says here, God created the jinn from fire, the first Alps. Well, Alps here is being Jan. Okay, the plural of the word jinn, right? Is their father, Sumya, is said to be in the novel, it's incorrect, blah, blah, blah. All right, what, what, what they're saying is, we call it for Ruwaya Gara Sahiha. Ruwaya Gara Sahiha, they translated this as an incorrect novel. Actually, Ruwaya basically is a kind of a saying or, an, or a story or a news report. And it says here that it's Gaira Sahiha incorrect. The testament was deemed false. And the testament here says, uh, A novel weak bond stated in the book of Ibn Kathir, the Allah Almighty. So they're referencing an actual book in which this statement has appeared. And they're saying that this testament or this narration is weak. And the information to back it up is weak. So as far as they're concerned, it's a false testimony. And in this false testimony, it says that Sumia was created first, and God gave him the earth and everything on it, around him and what he wants them. And so the translation here is, isn't coming out very accurate. It says, Gin. Mm. Anyway, so it meant to say the jinn was the first servant of the Lord in the land. Right? So the Gabal translation is trying to tell us that this is an actually false narration in which the word Sumia first appeared and in which Sumia tells God, I wish that I could be seen and not, I could see and not be seen. I wish that I could see and not be seen. وَأَنْ يَصِيرَ كَهْلَنَا شَابًا And that becomes, our, the, our old will be young again. And God basically answered Sumia's promise and wish and made it, gave him the earth to live upon and inhabit. So the saying that Jinn was the first inhabitant and God put them there on earth and that Sumia was the father. So this is the narrative and this is where this guy is getting it here. He's saying Sumia is the father of Jinn. But we're looking at online references, which is the Arabic Wikipedia, and that information is saying that this particular story or narration is false, it's a weak testament, has no proof and no backing, meaning that probably the author invented it himself and put it in the book, and then attributed it to the Prophet of Islam and to God himself, but the evidence doesn't back it up, that neither God nor the Prophet had narrated this particular story so, where it comes from, where its origin, we have no idea. If we go back here and read a bit more, he's talking about the angels here, and he's talking about the jinn, he's talking about Iblis, etc. And he says here that there's a bit of confusion on the nature of Iblis, a.k.a. Satan, with the jinn and the, and the demons. And there's three phrases here. First, Iblis is the father of the jinn. So now we have another possibility. He first says, Sumia is the father of the jinn. And now he's backing up by saying, Iblis is the father of the jinn. And then he says, Iblis is the father of Satan's. But the, the jinn origin comes from Jan. So, ah, see, we see here again. The guy is saying that Jan is the father of the jinn. As Iblis is the father of the demons, basically. And the third possibility is that Iblis is neither the father of the jinn nor the father of demons, but simply was one of them. Which is the most logical and supported argument, really, and we will go into why here in a second. Now, note that the author in this particular post himself acknowledges that Jan, see here, a Jan, Jan was actually the father of the jinn. If you take these three sentences here that you just wrote and flip them into the translator software, okay. Iblis, the devil, meaning Iblis, 
is the father of the jinn, etc., etc. The devil is the father of demons and the jinn. But the origin is the origin else. Well, they translate the word jan here as else. But the actual Arabic word is jan. So it's the origin here of the jinn is jan. And it's based on a Quranic verse, which we'll visit here in a minute. And then the third possibility, the devil is not the father of the, they said committee, but Abel jinn and here in the sentence, is the father of the jinn as a, see the plural here is used as jinn, right? See how we use, always using the word jinn for plural. Even so the word jan sometimes is used for plural, the most common is the word jinn, like this, see, like that. That's the plural, the most common. Now, it, it can be used, but as you can see here, the commonly used is jinn. Um, all right, so this is the three arguments he's proposing. Let's take a look at why the devil is not the father of the jinn. And the argument can be found in this Quranic phrase, illa iblis an kanamina jinn. This is a Quranic, so we can, we can dig it up, and the Quranic verse. Let's see if we can get an English translation of this or not. It says, We said to the angels to prostrate before Adam. They all prostrated except Iblis, who was from the jinn. Now, the word Kanamin, he was from, is a clear implication that the jinn already existed first, as a species. You cannot be from something that doesn't already exist, right? If he was the origin of the jinn, he would have said, Kana jinni, right? Or Kana abu jinn, he was the father of the jinn, or he was a genie. But the word min, from, is a very clear indicator here that Iblis comes from an already existing species. It's not very evident from the Quran where he fits in the hierarchy but we can tell that he wasn't the first of his kind because they already existed and he was from his people the jinn basically alright so we can rule out now two possibilities one sumya because even so sumya is mentioned and referenced we also have the references there in the literature that that particular story is false and it's not supported and it's not backed up. So if somebody tells you, no, the father of the jinn is Sumya, you say, wait a minute, yes, that is in the narratives. That particular testimony has been shown to be false and fraudulent. So we don't want to give it a lot more stock than just being a hearsay story by one author. We cannot use it as a basis all by itself. And if somebody tells you, well, Iblis is the father of the jinn, you can say, well, no, because the Quran says the jinn already existed when Iblis came to be. Well, that leaves a third possibility, and the possibility is Jan. Now, we can take this possibility by default and just skip the first two and say, well, if A and B are excluded, C is, you know, the remaining option. But that necessarily means it's the only remaining option. There could be an option we don't know. So why would we go with that option? Why would you select Jan as the option? The reason for selecting Jan as an option has to do with the way the rest of the verse is um, written out. Wajan khalaqnahu min qabli min nar sumum. Now khalaqnahu means created, we created. The interesting thing about this though is that khalaqnahu is singular. And it says, from before. So we just have a singular reference. Jan, which is at times is used linguistically to identify all species, here appears as an individual. Now, just to be clear, we, we can look another phrase here in the Quran. Sa. Safat 11. Let's look here, Safat 11. Let 
Let's just put this in English to make our life easier. Salfat is a chapter in the Quran, and 11 is a verse. This is the Quranic verse, and we have the word Khalaknahum again. And then, then the word teen, lazib, which is kind of like wet mud. So now we're talking about the creation of mankind. And the word khalaknahum is used plural. See, we have the M added here to identify plurality. So if it's singular, khalaknahu is for a singular masculine. If you want to make it plural, you add the M, khalaknahum, right there. See, khalaknahum. Let's just copy this alone by itself, fling it in here, see if you can get more. Yeah, there's the verse again with the word, the plural Khalaknahum being in here from Surah to Safat. So we go back to this here. And the Quranic verse you're referring to Jan in the singular form, not plural form, and then says from before, and then says from fire. So we have a Quranic phrase that gives us the name of a jinn in a singular form, other than Iblis, and says he was created from before, as in the beginning of things, from fire. So there is a reason that Islamic scholars, Arabic occultists, and various researchers in this field who are familiar with proper Arabic and familiar with Quranic study have accepted that Jan is the one of the possibilities for being the origin. And if you take the Quran as a scripture and you give it value, as a scripture, as being the word of God, then it becomes indisputable from that perspective that Jan is the point of origin of the jinn. And basically the jinn were named after their father in the sense of saying Adam and Adamites. Right? And as you can see, this information is common knowledge. Alright, thank you for joining me here and much blessings to everybody who's been listening.